Well, you can see here, I'm wearing a helmet. Decided to break down and get the helmet. I've debated it for quite a while. And based upon the tight quarters in a Super Cub, the fact that I'm flying low and slow often, and particularly living here in New Hampshire, where about 90% of the terrain is treed and high treed, this came to the point where I felt, from a safety perspective, it's not a bad idea to have a helmet. I don't plan to use it on all types of my flying, particularly flight instruction, archers, warriors, moonies, Cirrus's aircraft like that, but in a Cub tandem type setup where it's very tight, you've got bars all over the place, um, just thought it'd be a smart idea to go ahead and get the helmet. Um, this is a Sky Cowboy helmet uh, where I integrated in the, um, the Bose A20 headset. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been up in the Cub. I was on vacation for a while down in Florida, taking a break from all types of flying for a bit, and just a beautiful looking day out here today, so I couldn't resist coming out to check out the helmet for the first time, and possibly head to another airport. We're going to see how the winds are, see how I feel once I get up in the air. I have to say this helmet I can tell it's already quieter in it. I've got the headset tightly up against the ears, but... Victoria, driver, sky, okay, one Victor, ten across, wind, two, six, Victoria. But just having the uh, helmet on, I think, is adding another layer of kind of sound isolation. I'm really hearing out of the headset very well. The Carney traffic, Super Cup 816, Whiskey Room, departing, departing 2-6. We'll be exiting the pattern on the left downwind to the east, Laconia. Ah, uh, beautiful looking day out here. Look on your traffic. We've got being one six whiskey run. We're gonna do a right turn out right over the lake. Sorry. Does feel a little different wearing the helmet. It is so soundproof. You feel like you're uh, not quite one with the engine, the aircraft. We've got some thermals out here. Wow. Now Washington looks really bright today. Well, the snow is all gone except for over Mount Washington off my left. And ice out was declared uh, about three days ago, I think, over here in Lake Winnipesaukee. I don't see any ice on the lake anywhere. Yeah, so I decided to go ahead and get this uh, helmet. Um, I debated it for a while. However, flying in a Cub, very narrow tandem configuration. You've got bars all around you. I'm six foot four, banged my head a few times uh, in some turbulence, and just thought, you know, not a bad idea to get the helmet. Okay, just, just for the turbulence. Turn left cross, right, two, six, um, also, if you look out around me, you can see in New Hampshire, it's almost all tree, very few fields, uh, very Tony few open spaces. I don't do any off-field landings, at least not yet. Uh, but I do go to grass strips, and they are pretty narrow. I try the visor. Oh uh, yeah, it definitely helps, particularly when you have an open canopy up top uh, that's not tinted. It really adds some um, protection from the sun, gets rid of some of the glare. So I do see looking down at my instruments, it's a little bit um, distracting because I see. I see a combination of gauges mixed with the uh, bottom edge of the visor. So I'm looking out, it's a great, but when I'm looking down, it's like a reverse foggles. So I think these are great for the visor when you're running into the sun, but if you don't need to use them, I don't use them. So I'm headed in the direction of Sanford, Maine, 
toward the seacoast. Not sure I'm going to make it there, but we're going to give it. I'm going to go in that direction. We'll see how I feel if I want to go take a landing out there. I got a nice ground speed of 108 knots, but I know on the way back, uh, based on this, I'm going to be going at about 60, uh, 60 miles an hour. So I got ground speed of 105, 91 airspeed. So I know when I go back, I'm going to have uh, probably around 75 to 80 miles per hour. I had a late start today, so it's a little bumpy. IE, JPI EDM 730 is all working nicely now. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think we're going to turn back. Quite bumpy and quite about a, got a lot of gusts over at uh, Stanford today. Take a tour over the lake a little bit more. Beautiful view of Mount Washington. I'm 6'4". This helmet's about an inch and a half more to that. I've still got about four inches between myself and the top of the uh, glass here. So we're getting a nice view of Lake Winnipesaukee from the east. And the only thing that's white anymore is Mount Washington over there on the right at about 2 o'clock. A little runway off to my left here, a little grass strip. Well, it's not very smooth at any altitude here. That's what happens to be a beautiful day. Get a lot of uh, heating of the earth. And particularly when it's just so cold, uh, with the snow just freshly mounting. Uh, the water's cold, the earth's cold. Get a lot of uh, thermals on days like this. So this is the advantage of coming out early or waiting till the very end of the day. You get a lot smoother air. Come out midday, you're going to get a lot of bumps. But again, I would say this helmet really uh, helps reduce noise even further. Uh, the cups on these Bose A20 are kind of firmly placed up against my ears. I could crack them open and loosen a little bit, uh, but I like the, the silence. I will say, as I said earlier, I feel like I'm having to adjust to listening to the sound of myself. So for me, it's not just about visuals, what I see for gauges, but also what I hear. And it is so quiet, uh, with noise cancellation on, cancellation on. Uh, but even with that, with the helmet, it feels like it's quieter than usual, and uh, you lose a little bit of that sense of hearing uh, when we're in the headset. Kind of interesting here, this is Wentworth Lake, off to my right, and you can see that long island there in the middle. It looks very similar to Rattlesnake Island over here on Lake Winnipesaukee. Just reversed. Interesting. We'll furrow up by right here. So just do a little steep turn here. Take a look down below me. I looked into several different helmets, um, the Bone Helmet, uh, manufacturer of helmets. Uh, they looked very nice, except they were a lot more expensive than what I'm wearing here. Uh, they had the headset integrated in from what I could see. Uh, I'm sure that added well to the cost, but integrating in my own Bose A20 headset with the helmet and buying a new headset, uh, another Bose A20, cost me about $1,600, uh, about half the price if I had gone and bought a Bone uh, helmet. There's a fisherman out there, probably fishing for salmon. Island. The 
Laconia traffic. Super W16 Whiskey Romeo, five miles northeast of the airport inbound for 26 Laconia. Yeah, so I don't know if I need to adjust my helmet or the visor in some way. I have to play with that a little bit more. Maybe I can do that lower. But it definitely does kind of screw up the view when you're looking down at your panel. So to be honest, I'm going to have to get used to this hel helmet. It's definitely a great thing to have from a safety perspective. When you do wear it, you do feel a little bit removed from the aircraft, uh, as I said, mainly because of sound. Um, the vision with the visor down. Laconia, car traffic, Cherokee 9 or 631, Juliet is turning base, runway 26 Laconia, full stop. It is great when you're looking right into the sun, but if you're look, or looking right out the window, but looking down kind of interrupts the flow of the panel. But other than that, I, I'm glad I got it, and I will be using it regularly. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell when I come out with my next video.